we talked a little bit about sugar. Um, you've mentioned it. I think most people would say, yeah, it's bad. Do they really know how bad it is? That's one of the biggest misconceptions in the world. And just last night, um, on my online membership service, I have an online membership service you can get a subscription for. And part of the subscription gives you three hours of live health webinars a week. We do three hours of live health webinars a week for subscribers. And I have over 100 hours of archived health webinars that are available in the library that are available to members at my website. Just last night, I did a one-hour presentation all about sugar and sugar metabolism because it is an extremely misunderstood concept, extremely misunderstood. So if, if, if I can pitch myself here, I'll give you the short answer about sugar, but if the listening audience really wants to see this in depth, then just go to drglidden.com. Uh, become a subscriber. It's $20 a month. You can cancel at any time and check out the webinars that I've done because knowledge is power. So the problem with sugar is not the sugar. The problem with sugar is how much sugar and how well is your body equipped to metabolize it. Sugar is the gasoline of your body. You could not blink an eyelash without sugar. Your body loves and needs sugar. You know how much? DNA, your genetic material. Deoxyribonucleic acid. The ribo stands for ribose, which is a sugar. Your DNA is made from sugar. So how bad can it be? You couldn't exist. Your physical body would not exist if there wasn't sugar. Your body loves and needs sugar. Sugar is so important to your body, your liver can make it through a process called gluconeogenesis, just like it can make cholesterol, because it needs it. It's very important. Sugar is very important. Sugar is not the antichrist. You'd be dead without sugar. You wouldn't even be existing without sugar. The problem isn't sugar. The problem is how much sugar are you pouring down the hatch at any moment in time and how well equipped is your body to metabolize it. Now, if you look at a chart for the amount of sugar that we were eating in the 1800s and the amount of sugar that we're eating now, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's massive amounts of sugar now, right? And as I spoke about before, one of the reasons for that is the food is so anemic now because it's grown in soil that's completely minerally deprived. The food tastes like crap, and so the food industry puts sugar in with the food just to make it taste good. All right? So we've, we are consuming culturally way too much sugar, number one. And number two, in order for your body to process sugar, or remember, sugar is like gasoline. And all of the cells in your body, trillions of cells in your body are like little automobiles. And they all need gasoline. Sugar has to get inside the tank of all of the cells of your body. It does that through the use of insulin. All right? So you eat something that has sugar in it, now there's sugar in your bloodstream. Doesn't matter if it's fructose, glucose, sucrose, doesn't matter. Glucose is the preferred form of sugar but your body will take whatever it can get. So you've got sugar in your blood. When there's sugar in the blood, the pancreas secretes insulin. Now there's insulin and sugar in the blood. Insulin flows through the bloodstream and through some agency that is inexplicable that medical science is clueless about, insulin sticks to and binds to insulin receptors on the outside of every cell wall. It's kind of like somebody showing up to your front door and ringing the doorbell, right? And when they ring the doorbell, the kitchen door automatically opens to allow the groceries to come in. So insulin binds to an insulin receptor on the cell wall, sends a signal through the inside of the cell to open up a sugar door to allow the sugar into the cell, and that's how the fuel of sugar, the gasoline of the body, gets into the cell. Insulin rings the bell, 
The kitchen door opens and the groceries come in. In this case, the sugar comes in. Life is good. In order for that signal from the front door to get to the kitchen door, to open it, vanadium and chromium, which are two peculiar trace minerals, and a number of other nutrients need to be present inside the cell. If they are not there, insulin rings the bell, the signal gets interrupted, the kitchen door stays closed. So sugar piles up in the blood. What does the body do? Makes more insulin. Sugar piles up in the blood. What does the body do? Make more insulin. It's called insulin resistance syndrome. It's the same thing. Syndrome X, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance syndrome, uh, pre-type 2 diabetes, and type 2 diabetes, from our point of view, are all the same illness. Just more and more and more and more and more and more of it. And what causes the illness? Lack of minerals. 1957, an MD, Walter Mertz, proved with scientific studies with mice that if you eliminate chromium from the diet of the mouse, the mouse gets type 2 diabetes. You put chromium back, it goes away. Further studies were done with the trace mineral vanadium that showed the same thing. Now remember, your medical doctor is not concerned with what causes disease. Your medical doctor has no respect, no appreciation, no training in medical nutrition. So your medical doctor, when you are having a blood sugar issue, which is on the rise here, unbelievable, skyrocketing, the only thing your medical doctor will advise you to do is wait until it gets really bad, and then we'll give you metformin. Oh, by the way, we have no idea how metformin works. The molecular action of metformin is unknown. Well, what does it do, doctor? Well, it does a number of things. The two biggest are it reduces your liver's production of glucose, and it reduces the absorption of glucose by your intestinal tract. That's all that it does. Does that fix the doorway problem? No! And then when it gets really bad, what does the medical doctor do? Give you more insulin. Now, when insulin piles up in the bloodstream in enormous amounts, by sheer volumetric pressure, it punches holes in the wall of the cell wall and the cell dies. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing. This is why we believe people with blood sugar issues get peripheral neuropathy, gangrene, lose their toes, lose their feet, lose their fingers, lose their hands, lose their legs, lose their arms. It's the insulin, we believe, you know, in concert with excited amounts of sugar, but nonetheless, the MDs are clueless about how to fix this, and they don't even care about how to fix it. We advise people who are dealing with a blood sugar issue to support and promote their body's ability to optimize its blood sugar metabolism, and we do that with mineral supplementation, and it's awesome. <laughs>